Sure, unlike the Kelly Hamilton, uh, unlike the short triangularization theorem, you have seen or in your undergraduate curriculum. So this is the Kelly Hamilton theorem. Has anybody not heard of the Cayley Hamilton theorem? So let T A of T be the characteristic polynomial of A. Then, what does the Cayley Hamilton theorem say? A yes, satisfies the Kerr-Posey equation. So P A of A is zero. Uh, yeah, is the zero where the zero is actually a zero matrix, right? This is a polynomial, but I'm evaluating the polynomial uh, at T taking the value equal to an n cross n matrix A. So I'm replacing T with an n cross n matrix and I'm evaluating the characteristic polynomial and I get the all zero matrix. So this is a zero of size n cross n. So that is what the Kelly Hamilton theorem says that uh, uh, that any matrix satisfies its characteristic polynomial. So again, it's a yeah. This is again one of those uh, uh, very cool results of linear algebra that is completely non-intuitive um, to me at least. Uh, I I'm I cannot give you an intuitive reason why a matrix should satisfy its own characteristic polynomial. OK, so let's. Uh, uh, so have you guys seen a proof of this theorem? So P A of T is by definition determinant of T I minus A. So that implies that if I wanted to find P A of A, that is equal to the determinant of a i minus a, which is equal to the determinant of the all zero matrix, which is equal to zero. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. This is an incorrect proof. You know, you can see that actually. Hmm? Yeah, it doesn't that. is a real number, sir. It is not a matrix. Yeah, it's a that's a very uh, very good point. So obviously, I already observed that P A of A is actually a matrix, a size n cross n. But if I do it this way, you know, this thing is giving me a scalar value. This is one cross one. So some, I mean, there is no meaning to saying that P A of A is equal to determinant of a i minus a. So what went wrong was I should have actually first evaluated this and I get a polynomial out of this and then substitute uh, a instead of t in that polynomial. I cannot directly substitute uh, replace t with a inside the uh, expression for the determinant. OK, so this is an incorrect proof. Here, here let me make uh, another attempt. So we know that P A of lambda equals zero for every <coughs> eigenvalue lambda of A. OK, that is that we know because by definition an eigenvalue is a zero of a characteristic of the characteristic polynomial. So we also know that given any polynomial Q of X, The eigenvalues of Q of A are what? Q of lambda. Okay, so I just evaluate that polynomial at the eigenvalues and I get the eigenvalues of Q of A. 
OK, so that means that. If I wanted to find the eigenvalues of. P A of. A. OK, that would be P A of Lambda, which is equal to zero because this is true for every eigenvalue of A. OK. Are all equal to zero. So that means that if whatever this P A of A is, it's a matrix whose eigenvalues are all equal to zero. So that implies. P A of A equals zero. OK, so this is a, so so this is the proof. So none of you object. So the fallacy of this proof is that. Yeah, even if the eigenvalues are zero, it doesn't mean that the matrix should be equal to zero. We already have yeah. seen this example 0, 1, 0, 0. There are many other examples where uh, the matrix is not 0, but its eigenvalues are all equal to 0. OK, so this is also incorrect. OK, so now we'll actually. So now this is the correct proof. So basically P A of T is a polynomial of degree N with zeros lambda one through lambda N. OK, and uh, also the leading coefficient of this P A of T is one. That is the coefficient of t power n is 1. So that implies I can write P A of t in the form t minus lambda 1 into t minus lambda 2 t minus lambda n. So this is the form of uh, the characteristic polynomial. Now from sure theorem, So I said we'll see some uses of sure theorem. So this is the use. We are using the theorem. We can write A equal to U T U Hermitian. I'm just taking the U to the other side where T is upper triangular with lambda I on diagonal. So then if I evaluate P A of A, because I've written this polynomial out in the expanded form like this, I can now actually substitute. For uh, A in this in this polynomial equation, so I'll write it as P A of U T U Hermitian. Which is equal to U T U Hermitian minus Lambda one I. Times U T U Hermitian minus Lambda two I etc up to u t u hermitian minus lambda n i okay so that is equal to i can i can write i as u u hermitian and pull out a u on the left and a u hermitian on the right and write it as u t minus lambda 1 i u hermitian times u t minus lambda 2 i u hermitian u t minus lambda n i u hermitian and this u hermitian u is all the identity matrix so I'll, I'll be left with a u on the left and a u hermitian on the right and all the middle u's will actually disappear they're just the identity matrix so I can write this as u t minus lambda 1 i t minus lambda n i 
y u hamitian which is equal to u times p a of t so this this thing is actually the characteristic polynomial of t as well because t is similar to a and u hamitian <coughs> and so clearly p a of a will be zero if uh, and only if this p a of t is equal to zero now p a of t is equal to this matrix if i look at t minus lambda 1 i lambda 1 is the 1 comma 1th element of t and so this will have a zero on the top and it may have something here and this is upper triangular and next matrix you know has something here the 1 comma 1th element but the the second element will be zero and then this will have zeros all down the first column and over here there could be arbitrary things and then there are zeros down here and um, this the rest of this row can be arbitrary but this part will be upper triangular and so on and the last one will have some structure like this and then zero at the bottom and then zeros down here but now this form here is exactly the form we studied in the property where the, this element is zero and so when i multiply these two together the first two elements will become zero so if i multiply these two the top 2 cross 2 top left 2 cross 2 sub matrix is zero okay by the property we just discussed and if i take the first three matrices together okay after that then you will see that the top left 3 cross 3 sub matrix equal 0 and so on and so if you multiply all of these together the top left n cross n is 0 or p a of t is the zero matrix and so that proves the result so i'm a bit over time so we'll stop here